Hi, and welcome back to Glassbox, writing automated protector tests. Today we're going to continue where we left off and have a look at using different types of locators to help locate elements on a web page when writing tests using protector. We will follow a dummy scenario on our JavaScript test page and to simulate that user experience or rather to automate that scenario we we'll look at using a couple of different locators. So let me show you what scenario we're going to automate first. So we're going to go ahead to the JavaScript test site and on this test site we're going to first populate this input box with some data and then we're going to check that this data was generated. We're then going to press this continue button which will take us to this animal drop down selection screen. We will then select an animal from here. It won't really matter which one we select, we'll just select one at random maybe. So we'll prob might go with maybe symbol the line. We'll then press continue which will take us to this thank you confirmation page and that's it. So nothing too complicated. So let's go ahead and automate this. So let's go back to the home page first. So quickly revisiting our configuration file from last time. The only thing in this configuration file will change or rather will keep the same is where our test is or rather the name of our test. And we're still going to call it zoo underscore spec. So let's have a look at our test. So at the moment our test is empty. So let's get straight into it and start writing it out. So the first thing I'm going to do is write a describe block. And in this describe block I'm going to name it adopt an animal on the zoo test site. So I've already explained uh, the syntactical structure of this test in my previous video to write a basic protector test. So if you want to understand what this, what the structure of this test is and possibly questions around what is a describe block and what uh, other blocks will use, then have a quick see of my previous video. Otherwise, let's continue on. So the test we said we'd do in this video is when we navigate to the home page, we will input some data in this input field. We'll then press the continue button. So let's do that first. So we'll write out an it test block and I will call this uh, should be able to adopt an animal. And the first thing we want to do is actually navigate to the site. So once we've navigated to the site, we said that we would insert data into this input field. So let's have a quick look at the source code. So inspect the element. And this has what's called an attribute of type ng model. So quickly recapping how we actually grab elements on a page. When we use locators, so in this instance we'll be using the model locator. So when we use locators to locate an element on a web page, so for instance this title is an element, this input field is an element, this text is an element, this link here is an element, this button is an element, almost everything can be treated as an element. In fact, this table cell could be treated as an element, the entire table can be treated as an, ele as an element and so on. So how do we actually get a hold of these elements on a web page? Well, to do that, we need to use what are called locators, which we can write using Protector. So Protector has various different locators we can use. Locators bind to an attribute inside a tag. So if we have a look at this input field, for instance. This input field, which is inside an input tag, has a couple of different attributes we can use. It's got a class attribute, an ng-valid attribute, an ng-model attribute, and we'll be using this ng model. Now Protector 
provides us with various different bindings that we can use or various different types of locators we can use and one of those locators is called the model locator so let's go ahead and use that so to actually locate an element on a page we need to pass it into the element method so this method here is called the element method this is used to locate an element and then inside this element we need to pass in the type of attribute we're looking for and the value we're looking for in the attribute so in this case we're going to say the by what the by does is the by allows us to find something by a locator so in this case we're using the model locator so what this means is we're using the element method to find something and we're using it to find by a model locator the model locator also takes in an argument in that it takes in the value of the model name so if we go back the value we want is person.name this is the value of this attribute so if you go in and type in person.name this will now basically locate the element for us once we found the element we're looking for we can act on it or rather we can interact with it and use other methods on it in this case we'll use the send keys because that's what we said we do we try and input some information and to do that we need to use the send keys method and in here will send in some dummy data and that's what we will send in the next thing we said we do is try and grab this information that's generated as we type information into this field so if we were to change this this text is auto generated based on this input so we will try and grab this information as well so let's have a look at this and see what we can get from this so this has again two different attributes a class attribute and an ng bind attribute which is perfect because this is different to the ng model attribute so we can now use this ng bind attribute which is a different type of locator to help us grab this information so let's go ahead and do this the value it had was the same as the ng model person.name so we'll also pass in person.name and then we're going to get the text now we want to print out the text so what we'll do is we'll use the then method on this and in the then method we'll pass in the text and then we'll use the console log to print out the text fantastic so we can now enter information into the input field and print out the text that's generated the next thing we said we would do is click on this button so let's have a quick look at this right so this has uh, a style attribute and an on click attribute but more importantly it's actually inside a button tag protector provides us with a locator we can use to actually click on buttons and to do this we simply type in element by button text we pass in the text of the button so in this case it was continue and then we use the click method on this to click on the button this will now go off find the button and click on it so as far as our scenario goes we've inputted some data and we have printed out the data we've put in and we've put, pressed the continue button the next thing we said we do is select an element from this drop down list and then click on the continue button again so let's have a look at this to see if there's information in there we can use so in here we have a couple of options we have well we know it's inside a select class it has an ng options attribute and an ng model attribute so let's go ahead and use this ng model attribute again and it was called animal Ooh, let me just quickly check was it animal or animals it was animal and that will now help us locate the drop down what we will do ne next is we will now chain on 
what's called a CSS locator inside this element and we can invoke the CSS locator by placing a dot followed by the dollar sign and then inside the dollar sign we can pass in CSS expressions to help locate something relevant to the returned value of this element so in this case this element is returning us drop down if we have a quick look it's returning us effectively this drop down here this is what it's returning us so if we now use the dot dollar operator on this we can now get values relevant to that and we can use CCS expressions to help us find more information about it so in this case if we have a quick look at this at the code So it has, if you were to get, say, George the Turtle, it has various options, and inside each option we have a value attribute, and then inside the actual option we have the actual text. So let's try and select this value attribute of an option which has a value of its own. So if you want to do this, we can quite simply say value equal to whatever the value is. So in this case we're going to say 1. Now CSS expressions are usually wrapped inside box braces, like so. And then we can go ahead and click on this. Fantastic. So that will now effectively hit the drop down and select George the turtle for us. The last thing we said we'd do is click on this continue button, which would then take us to this thank you page. So let's have a quick look at this. In fact, we don't actually need to look at this because we know Protactor supports clicking on buttons with button text. So let's go ahead and do that. In fact, if I just copy this line here, this should effectively do it for us. Now, let's not use button text. Let's use something a bit different. Protactor supports clicking on buttons like we know by searching for the text inside a button. But Protector also supports searching for text inside a button with a partial match. And we can do the same thing here. So instead of saying button text, we can say partial button text. And instead of saying continue, let's just say cont, for instance. This line will now go for, or rather specifically, this element will now return a button on the page which has the character C O N T in that order somewhere appearing inside the text of a button. Once it finds the button, it will click on it. So effectively, you'll find this button. There are only two buttons on this page, a back button and a continue button. And the cont phrase, so C-O-N-T, that only appears inside this button. So if we click on it, that will then take us to the con thank you page. So let's quickly save this and run this and see what happens. So the first thing we need to do is run Web Driver Manager. We also need to navigate to this test and run it. Let's do a quick directory listing on here. So here's our conf file. Let's run that. Oh, we've got an error in our script somewhere. Ah, right, so here's the error. So what I've done is, I've tried to navigate to this element, but I haven't actually closed off the tag. So let's do that first. I've also noticed that I've actually incorrectly put in the link here. It's supposed to be forward slash. Right, so let's save that and run it. And there you go. So the test ran quite quickly actually, but we could see that it navigated to the browser, it then populated the input field, and if we have a look at the console, it also printed out the text, i.e. subscribe to my channel, two more videos, uh, that should be four more videos. And it printed it out, and then it clicked on the button, and then it selected an item from the drop down box based on the value and then it clicked on the continue button using a partial button text as opposed to a button text locator. So in this video we've actually covered a good amount of locators we can use for Protector. 
This might have been a slight repeat of the old one in that we did cover this, but I don't think we covered it in more detail. And in this video we actually extended locators by looking at two more different locators showing you the kind of power you have. So this has been for what it's worth a basic video but we do go into more information on how to use different locators. For my next video what we will do is we will actually start looking at how to come away from printing out stuff to the console and start using some validation checks to actually pass our test and fail our test. Thanks a lot for watching. Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching my video. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with my latest videos which I release every Wednesdays and Sundays. Also follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Until next time, ciao.